What's going on guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. We got a CP passage, a chemistry slash physics passage coming at you guys. Let's do this. Passage number 10 guys. As always, do the passage on your own first and do the questions on your own first and then hear me break it down. Okay, that's the best way that you're going to learn. All right, see where you went wrong. See where you went right. Okay, this is question 53. Write down your answer. 54, write down your answer. 55, write down your answer. And 56, write down your answer. Hopefully you guys get it all right. So here we go. I'm going to break this passage down now. I'm going to show you guys how to get all these questions right. All of them. All right. In the easiest way possible. In the fastest way possible. And actually get them all right. Like correct. Not only incorrect, correct. Like get them all right. Be very efficient. All right. Let's do this. Passage 10. Here we go. Fat molecules and adipose tissue are important energy reservoirs in mammals. Okay. If I am encountering something that I've seen before and then I'm pretty confident in, you know, from reviewing my content that I know what they're talking about, do you think I'm going to read it slow and highlight? No. I don't got time for that. I only have an hour and like 30 minutes to do this whole entire freaking section. All right. What if I have to spend a lot of time on another passage that's way more complicated, okay? I'm going to go through it rather quickly, all right? So, after eating excess dietary non-esterified fatty acids, NEFAs, okay, I'm just going to highlight that to remember that that's what NEFA means, are esterified into triacylglycerols, which are subsequently stored in systolic lipid droplets of adipocytes. When required, tag stores are mobilized via hydrotic cleavage, and the resulting NEFAs are delivered via the circulation to peripheral tissues for beta oxidation, ATP production. This breakdown of lipids into glycerol and free fat acids is called lipolysis. Okay, again, I'm reading this quick because I already know this. I'm, I already took biochem. I took biochem one and two. All right, I know all this stuff. I don't care about highlighting it. Give me something that I don't know, and then I'll highlight it. The relative balance of tag hydrolysis and NEFA esterification controls the cellular concentration of NEFAs, and this process is tightly regulated. Many of the enzymes used in this process are under hormonal control, and most are linked to upstream signaling pathways. Lipolysis involves hydrolyzing ester linkages between the glycerol backbone and long-chain fatty acids. This multi-step process is controlled by three specific hydrolases or lipases. Okay. All right. I don't know this part. First... Adipose triglyceride lipase, ATGL. All right, first up is ATGL. Cyclic like performs the first and rate limiting step. Important. Hydrolyzing a molecule tag to generate one diacylglycerol and one NEFA. All right, so I'll write that down real quick, okay? Let's say this is my uh, notebook that I have or the you know horrible dry erase paper they give you. When you take the actual MK and the Sharpie marker, which just it sucks. But anyways, this is what I would write down, okay? Just to give myself a reminder of what's going on and what to remember for the question. All right, so I would write this. ATGL, all right? It's going to make a tag into what? It's going to make into a diacylglycerol plus a NEFA, right? NEFA, non-sterified fatty acid. Okay, that's what ATGL does. Next, hormone-sensitive lipase hydrolyzes DAG into MAG and 1-NEFEA. All right, so this is going to be a hormone-sensitive lipase that makes it into a MAG and an NEFA. Cool. Although, no, of that, although it preferentially catalyzes step, HSL is actually capable of hydrolyzing. Oh. Tags, DAGs, and MAGs. Okay, so they could do all of them. Never mind. All right. You could do, I'm going to write here, all of them. All right, you can do all of them. The MAGs, DAGs, and TAGs at all steps of this reaction. Finally, monoacylglycerol lipase eventually or efficiently cleaves MAG into glycerol and 1-NEFA. I'm not going to write that down because that kind of makes sense. Monoacylglycerol, 1 Fatty acid left to cleave off. GOS2, GO slash G1 switch protein, directly interacts with the N terminal domain of ATGL. All right, interacts with the N terminal domain. I'm going to highlight that in case the question asks specifically about the N terminal domain. All right, an expression of GO, 
S2 correlates with insulin levels. Okay. I didn't know that. I'm highlighting that. That's important. All right. GOS2 correlates with insulin levels. In order to determine GOS2 expression patterns, several tissues samples were collected from a healthy lab rat. Okay. The samples were lysed, and three different macromolecules were isolated from each. PCR was performed on one. Reverse transcriptase PCR was performed on another, and the final was used for Western blot analysis. And that's the figure, and we don't look at the figure. We only look at the figure when the question asks for it, okay? Based on information in the passage, which of the following is true? Okay, let's see. Compared to fatty acids, molecules of triacylglycerol are relatively inert. Yeah, they are. What do they do? Tags. What function do tags, you know, the whole entire thing, the triacylglycerol, what does that do? They don't really do much except get broken down into fatty acids. They just get stored. That's it. They're pretty much inert. Okay, A makes sense. B, a competitive inhibitor for ATGL would decrease DAG catabolism. Okay, well, when we looked at here, okay, yeah, if we inhibit this, we're going to stop DAG from being produced. And if we stop DAG from being produced, then we're going to inhibit its catabolism. However, don't forget our boy here, HSL, hormone sensitive lipase. Okay, this can also go and break down DAGs. All right, HSL can also do that. And although this is true, okay, actually, no, although this could happen, okay, it's not necessarily true because we can still have catabolism of DAG through HSL, okay? HSL is responsible for generating glycerol and mag, but not DAG. Again, HSL can pretty much, you know, cleave all of them. It can cleave TAG. And going to cleave DAG as well. So if it cleaves TAG, it can form DAG. If it cleaves DAG, it can form MAG. Okay, so HSL can do everything. So this is not true. TAG contain two stable ester linkages. No, they contain three. That's why they're called triacylglycerol. Therefore, through process of elimination, 53 is A. And A makes sense. Lipolysis is followed by beta oxidation in order to ensure the cell can harvest ATP from lipid molecules. Which of the following is true of this process? <laughs> okay, you guys, you should know this. You should know beta oxidation, guys. This is simple content review. An isomerase and a reductase are required for complete oxidation. No, okay, a reductase is not required. This is beta oxidation. Okay, a reductase is required to for fatty acid synthesis, not oxidation. Lipolysis of a DAG will generate twice the amount of fatty acids and glycerol compared to lipolysis of a MAG. No, no, okay, there's one glycerol and two fatty acids. There's no two glycerols, it's one glycerol esterified to three fatty acids. All right, so B is wrong. Unlike cell respiration, Fatty acid catabolism starts in the mitochondria and finishes in the cytosol. No, it finishes in the matrix of the mitochondria, okay? That's where it finishes. Beta oxidation occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria, okay? So 54 is wrong. And of course, we end up through process elimination D. Let's see if D is correct though. The cell requires more than twice the number of NAD plus electron carriers compared to FAD electron carriers in order to harvest ATP from fatty acids. This is correct. This is correct, all right? What do you mean twice NAD? Yeah, you're gonna need twice NAD. NAD, all right? NAD, you, have, you, you form NADH in the Krebs cycle, you form NADH in glycolysis, all right? You're going to need those carriers to get reduced and form NADH, okay? You only need one FAD to make FADH2. And that happens, I believe, in succinate dehydrogenase. To either that one or succinate synthetase. You're going to have to comment down below and tell me which one it is that makes FADH2. 
But basically, guys, we need more electron carriers of NAD plus than FAD. Okay, that's common sense here. You guys should know that. A researcher interprets figure one to mean that GOS2 mRNA is ubiquitously expressed, but GO2S, I'm sorry, GOS2 protein expression is more tissue specific. Does the data in figure one support this conclusion? I'm looking at this. All right, PCR, the genes. Okay, that makes sense. We should have all DNA and all types of organs. RT PCR. Okay, this means only some mRNA is being used here. Only some genes are being transcribed. And protein, yeah. Out, out of those genes that are transcribed, okay, the mRNA for that makes the protein in specific tissues. Okay, it's not in all of them. You have higher levels in some than others. A, yes. Okay, the answer is yes, no matter what. All cells contain the same amount of mRNA for GO2S, but only some tissues contain GO2, GOS2 protein. This is wrong. This is wrong. Look, we have different amounts of mRNA. <laughs> okay? It's this thing the same. We have different. Yes, reverse transcriptase PCR gives information on what transcripts are present in a cell, correct? And Western block gives information on protein expression. Yes, this is exactly what these processes are for. Okay, that is what RT PCR is for, and that's what Western blot is for. This is correct. No, gene, no, it's not no. Okay, it's not no. You can tell that it's more tissue specific, all right? If it was not tissue specific, you'd see it in all of them, 100%. But you don't. You see it in only some tissues, okay, guys? More times than not, common sense will and not overthinking will get you some answers right on the MCAT. Trust me, guys. What would be the effect over expressing GOS2 in a dipocyte? Well, I remember from highlighting, all right, from highlighting certain things and not highlighting many things, because when you highlight many things, that defeats the purpose of highlighting, okay? I remember that overexpressing GOS2 correlates with insulin levels, okay? So I'm just going to look for something that correlates with high insulin. Elevated ATGL activity? No. Okay. Insulin is going to inhibit lipolysis and beta oxidation. Okay. And ATGL is used in lipolysis. B. A limited gluconeogenesis. This could be correct because um, if you have high insulin, that's going to inhibit gluconeogenesis. All right. C, massive lipid accumulation. Yeah, that's what's going to happen if you have high insulin. D, stimulation of protein catabolism. Uh, insulin is going to inhibit protein catabolism. All right, so this is wrong. It's either B or C. But since C was more talked about, since C was more... Uh, the whole basic research was about uh, lipids, not necessarily about gluconeogenesis. In that pathway so because of that because it's more evidence for c the better answer is c that's how you choose the better answer this is a good but this is a better answer therefore the better answer is c okay you look for one that's more evidently provided and the one that's more specific okay this is more specific because the whole research is about it the whole research is about this one specific thing about fatty acids so we go with the answer that's specific about fatty acids, which is C, okay? A little bit of accumulation. All right, and that's how you do it, guys. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Join MK University by hitting the link. Um, I got people asking me, you know, they're like, Eric, I really appreciate your videos. They help a lot. Can I send you a tip? And, I mean, you could if you want. I'm not going to ask for it, all right? It does help. So I put my Venmo and I put my PayPal you know, if you guys would like to send me a tip, that's obviously more than I'll be more than happy to receive them. Okay, any amount will help. So I'll see you guys in the next video.